<laughs> You're going early, huh? What'd you get? What happened? What happened? Fucking tree got me, dude. A tree fell on you? Yeah. No, my wife hit me, really. I just say that tree hit me. It was really my wife that did it. <sighs> Welcome to the details. Yeah, succotash. Yeah. Fuck you, John just, Paul. Just a little, just a little bit. That's me. Gonna be gonna click him. What up? What up, Fresh? What up, Kevin? May the force be with you, Weller. May the fourth be with you. Yeah, may the fourth. Damn, that's that was yesterday. It's huh? turned up, man. You can't tell that. It sounds the same. You say that every time, dude. I, I'm sincerely thinking you're fucking going deaf, bro. Huh? You, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. So what's up, man? Big time? Have a good week? Had a busy week. Yeah, we had a busy week at work. Fucking life. Oh, I'm tired. I did the fucking Reno trip. It's harder every time, dude. Why? You know, it driving-wise, it's not as bad now. I don't mind that because it just seems shorter. You know, it's not as fucking long as it used to be, but driving back with a hangover always sucks. You drive back and forth? Drove up Friday, drove back Saturday. No, afternoon. I mean you drive or Michelle drives. No, she drove back yesterday. Oh, you, that's what I drive up yeah. and usually Sarah drive back. Yeah, and split it up. I don't mind driving early in the morning, like I'm a morning person. Yeah, so I can get about two in the morning and drive, and I won't be tired at all. I just be tired in the evening. Fuck yeah, and and the hangover. I hate the hangover part. So you're gonna have one here in a couple of weeks, dude. Yeah, I think I will. You're going to have a hangover. I think I'm going to take shots and just throw up about four or five times. Yeah, it's going to be a good time, fuck dude. Fuck it. I can't wait for you to get lit and fucking start telling everybody the truth about oh, life, dude. fuck, dude. <laughs> I'm horrible. I told Michelle. I said, you haven't seen well or drunk. Wait till he gets drunk. It's going to be great. I told you. I did that at work before at a fucking Christmas party. And I was like, the next day I was like, what did I say, dude? Why? I was like, you don't fucking do shit. I don't even know why. You got a fucking job. You know, who the fuck even hired? And the owner's there. And then at some point, he's like, hey, Dave, that's a, that's enough. That's enough. I'm like, okay. All right. All right. I said what I got to fucking say. Yeah. Give me a raise. <laughs> <laughs> I was shooting. I was like, psh, 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 shooting people. Go give your shout outs. Yeah, me. we'll do the what's ups, man. Uh, our new subscribers this week, we got, uh, oh, there we go. See, that went down. Yeah, I turned it down because you. Could, I didn't want you to get. Yeah, I, was, I had hearing loss, dude, there for a second. Yeah, fuck okay. it. God damn, that sounds better, but thank you. Uh, <laughs> new subscribers this week, uh, Travis Carlson. We also got two people that uh, we don't know who they are. They're private subscribers, but thanks They're for Private what's up. citizens. And then I wanted to say, too, uh, I've been sending shirts out, so if you give us your address, your shirts should be there. I think I mailed out six of them this week, and it's fucking money, dude, besides the shirt. And the, it's like 10 bucks to send or $11 to send people a shirt, dude. Dude, you know what it probably It's not be, even a fucking pound. You know it'd probably be easier? If you fucking ordered the shirts and when you ordered them you had them mailed out. Because then you get like Amazon, you get free shipping or something. Yeah, but what happens is uh like if I just have one shirt printed, uh -huh. then it costs more money no, for no, that get one them, like, shirt. I wonder if you could get like fifty printed but then mail mail them out directly from there. Oh, <laughs> uh, that might that might be fucking the way to do it. I don't know if you could do that though. You guys got any way that's gonna make this look easier for us, tell us. Give us some comments, all that shit. What's up to my man Dave Thomas? What's up to Anthony OG Ogrodnik? What's up to Travis Pete Rose Carlson? Happy birthday, Matt Nelson. That was yesterday. Happy birthday today, Charity Cornwall. Uh, what's up to my man Mike JC? Vera K, J Bone, Gary Coran, and two other subscribers we looked up. We didn't know they had interest, but after our sex episode, we got Ron Jeremy and Peter North now. Peter North goes south. That's what I'm hearing, dude. And then our, our long-distance shout-out. I didn't even know this was possible. Uh, it's Las Vegas, New Mexico. Never heard of it, but there's a Las Vegas, New Mexico. It's an internet prodigy guy. He was the inventor of the paperless billing transaction. He was also our Pop Warner football coach here in Galt for the Galt Chiefs from 1985 to 87. Mike the Mailman Wazowski. What's up? Ew. Good shit. God damn, dude. <laughs> we need to play with that shit more. That's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never understood what that. I see people say it all the time. I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? 
That's now what you, she said. Now you understand it. Not really. I told uh, we were out with a couple couples and family, and we're fucking partying and shit for Matt's birthday Friday, dude. And uh, I said something about playing DJ, and the girl didn't understand. She's like, "What do you mean playing DJ? I'm all playing DJ." She's all, "Oh yeah." <laughs> <laughs> like she got it, dude. I guess. Yeah. I guess. So what are we gonna get turned on today, man? What do you got, buddy? How about we start off with uh parental rejection, dude? Parental we were hot on that, yeah. Okay, go ahead. So like give me some parental rejection. Um, before my grandpa passed, I always spent time with my grandpa. I'd go fishing with him, we went gambling, we'd sit around and talk about pussy, you know, fucking just normal god grandpa grandson shit right okay but when my grandpa passed away my dad had all this animosity or this fucking man i wish i would have went and seen him we live in the same town but i never went to see him like he didn't go visit his own dad dude you know mm-hmm. what i mean so now the shit is happening with my dad like i'm getting to the point where i don't want to go see my dad because every time i ask him to do something dad let's go fishing no dad let's go gambling no how about we go have lunch nah you know, let's go play pool. Nah, want to play poker. Nah. It's always got an excuse like my belly hurts or I'm not feeling good or this and that. But it's a form of rejection, dude. Like, you want to spend time with your dad and I'm willing to put in the time to do it, you know. But mm-hmm. he's getting to that older state now where he's like, you don't want to do shit, man. They don't want to do shit or you think they're just real self-involved? <laughs> what the fuck do you got going on, bro? You know, my dad's self-involved, dude. He don't got shit going on. That's what's crazy. What, what, are you, what, are and, you, what is your term self-involved? What is that? Um, Like... When I talk to him, everything refers back to him every time. Okay, I can So see. we start talking, and it, it goes back to him. And he don't have a lot of shit going on, but it always goes back to him. Oh, yeah, well, I went to the gym. Yeah, did you know your granddaughter is graduating college? Oh, yeah, 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 I've seen that. I've seen that. Hey, did I tell you the other day we went to Walmart? And, like, that's how fast he just changes. Changes and, subject. And yeah. I think from my dad, he's just real self-involved. And I just got to let it go. You know, I get irritated all the time. And the, the, the things, times I do invite him over to shit, you know, well, I'm just, I'm just I'm too busy or way too late. Like, he goes to bed, like, at 6 o'clock. It's like, what the fuck, man? I, I get to the point where I don't even invite him anymore because I'm like, I he's going to tell me no, and I'm going to get pissed. And it's not for me. It's for my kids. Yeah. And I, I don't know. But I do see some grandparents out there. We used to go to, uh, uh, my daughter played high school basketball. This girl on her team, her, her grandparents used to come to every single game and have shirts to say basketball grandparents on it. Yeah, yeah. So there is grandparents out there, that, and that's the kind of grandparents I want to be. I want to be that kind of grandparents where... Oh, my grandkids, I'm going. I'm there. What, you know, you guys don't have nobody to watch? Bring them over here. I'll watch them. Like, I want to be that kind of grandparents. I don't want to be the one. Like, I told my dad, you you know, you could call your grandchildren. You could text them. You know, you don't work. You don't, you're not married. Like, you don't, what do you have going on where you can't take 10 minutes out of your week to just to make some effort? Yeah, yeah. He just doesn't, you know, and whatever, you know. Well, I try to tell my kids, too. I'm like, dude, you know, your grandpa, grandpa's not going to call you. He's not going to invite you to do shit. That's just the way he is. So you need to be the one that fucking initiates it, you know? And I'm fucking falling through on that because, like, I had a good talk with my mom about it. I call my mom on anything. I said, Mom, you want to do this? She's like, yeah, she'll do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I talked to Dennis at work, and he has three grandkids, and, you know, he's all about his grandkids. It's like, yeah, I get them this weekend, or, yeah, we're going to go over there and do this, or, you know, even if it's complained about their little attitude or whatever. Yeah, that's the kind of grandparents I want to be. I want to be always, you know, doing shit with them. My grandparents were like, my grandma was like that. You know, they were always, like, really involved. Um, but my dad, no. He's just into his own world, man. What do you think it is? They're the ba- Your dad's baby boomer generation, too, huh? Is that, what, what's, what's that great yeah. age? 60? I think he's 62. I think my dad's 70. Yeah. 71, 62. maybe. And 62 is young, dude. 62 is not that's old. What, dude, that's what I'm saying. I mean, pfft. dude, I got like, we got like five guys I work with are fucking older than 70s. Like, my dad will say, oh man, I'm in by one o'clock. I'm just, I'm just burnt, man. I was trimming the bushes out there and I'm so tired. Like, I'm like, one o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> dad, shut the fuck up, man. Like, fucking, I got, we got two guys out there that are 70, multiple guys that are in their 60s. Like, they're older than you and they're working. You know, the old man, Chuck yeah, the Deuce, yeah. he'd crawl up. No, we didn't even, we had ex, uh, extension ladders, four floors, clean up, grab, beams and stuff and like he's 78 years old like fuck man and my dad oh i just you know it's it's hard for me to get around like you're not that old stop acting like you're a fucking dinosaur 
whatever. Live your own life. Forget Dude, it. I understand the pain part of it, but I think people have more mental mental they that's what i'm talking they about they restrain their stealth mentally yeah, yeah. oh 100 i don't know what it is dude i'm not shitting you dude my shoulder's been hurting right but the most i'm not fucking around either i danced my ass off of my old lady friday night we danced for about an hour and a half and you still I, a good dancer huh i still like to dance dude. yeah and uh fucking Yeehaw! my fucking shoulders hurt so bad the next morning dude. from what from my fucking overhead moves <laughs> I, got, I got going dude you know this guy pulled like, a hammy dancing i pulled his like a neck muscle or so I don't know but fuck man I don't know dude I think it's called parental rejection though that's what's going on with that yeah when we have it all the way around but whatever I'm sure know. everybody faces it at some point dude I don't know what it is you just don't want to get out and about and I understand that but I understand not getting out and about I understand that 100% but on special occasions you're still going to figure out a way to get out of it like what are you avoiding like what are you avoiding I don't know, man, because, like, the times I have been off, like, on my surgeries and shit, I get a pretty good taste of what it's like when you're retired. Mm-hmm. I just have routines. Like, I like to go to the flea market, you know, go walk around the flea market. Yeah, there's not going to be anything different there, but it's still fun to fucking walk around. People watch, just check shit out, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But, but if your routine is just waking up, smoking a bowl, playing fucking video poker for six or seven hours. I don't think old people are doing that shit. I just think that they're... Uh, I, I don't know in their own little world and I understand that I just I don't get the well, and then give me a guilt trip well you know it'd be nice for you to come by sometime and um, have you know see the kids it's like dude do you understand I work out of town all week and like I got stuff going on seven days a week we got stuff going on and you don't work you sit home and watch Judge Judy all day and you yeah. can't find uh, a four hour block where you could come and fucking check on us or whatever Get the fuck out of here. Well, here's the difference, too. When uh, You got to pick up and do something. You know, it used to be eight of us because we had six kids for us to go do something. That's a lot of people to get together and do something, dude. Yeah. So it, I'm bringing eight people to your house, your single bedroom apartment or whatever, <laughs> right? Or just you yourself could come over here and... Or... And when we went and did stuff, we would go pick him up. I would drive all the way over there, pick him up, bring him back so he could stay the night. And then I have to drive him back. Yeah. And he has a vehicle. It's a double dutch for you, uh, dude. I was like, fuck, man. Come on. Give me a break here. Well, if the old guys are listening, hey, pay attention to your kids. They still need you. still love you. Oh, but yeah, I'm going to go see Yanni at fucking, at, <laughs> fucking at, at Golden One. And he's staying in a hotel like down the street. I'm yeah. like, Dad, why didn't you say anything? You can stay at the house. Oh, no, I got myself a hotel. And I don't know. Maybe he wanted to go and jack off. I don't know. Dude, but, that's what it's about, dude. Getting some hotel room. Hotel so, sex. Yeah, you didn't want to get caught by my grandma. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ma, turn off the TV. Time to go to bed. He's he's listening to porn with fucking headphones on. <laughs> All you can hear. <laughs> uh, uh, close that bitch out, dude. Go ahead, man. What do you got? Who we got? Transgender sports. Ooh. Okay. I'm down with that. You tell you were telling me about that. You know more about it than me. Well, I seen that uh, this dude was a gr- he became a girl, so it's a her now. Mm-hmm. She entered the uh, it's like an Olympic fucking deal, man, like weightlifting and shit, right? Mm-hmm. Well, she went in and crushed all like eleven of fourteen records. She went in and just crushed them all, so she owns every record for fucking weightlifting now. in the women's division. the women's division. Yeah, I don't think it's fair, dude. No, I think- it's not fair. Whatever you're it's in sports, I think whatever you're born at, because then what happens to all these records? All of a sudden, these records start really not mattering anymore, you well, know, because you got guys doing it, really, basically. Okay, well, what we're seeing right now, though, is these uh, they're not the big three sports or the big four, even. But wait till what if a golfer, a golfer becomes transgender? Well, basketball, I mean, that's because, what I was thinking too, like because it's too different, you know, women will never be, and especially in basketball or football, will never be able to compete. Physically, at that level, not 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 really. You mean might might have one or two elite players, but overall. So what do you happens when you get a really good guy that is an athlete and becomes a woman and and competes in? I mean, he's going to dominate. So then, right. w- w- it, I don't know. That, that's that's going thinking. too far. Let's say you took somebody like uh, I don't know, like a Robert Ory, right? He's a pretty good player, but he, I mean, he's not. LeBron or Kobe or Mike, you know what I mean? But let's say Robert Ory goes over to the WNBA, right? Not even that. Let's just say a good college guy 
player. Like, just say that. That's probably where it's going to happen first is in college. Yeah, I don't know. That's, you know, and I'm all for LGBTQ rights and everybody's rights. I'm all for everybody's fucking rights, but, you know, I think we're crossing too many lines. I think we're crossing way too many lines. Dude, it, uh, I think what they ought to do is just like they did with Bonds. Bonds got the home run record, but there's an asterisk by it now. Yeah. They ought to have an asterisk for the transgender athletes. Well, I think they should allow uh, steroids in sports. Well, that's a different topic altogether, yeah. man. I mean, that's that'd be cool. I mean, just to see home run after home run, that'd be cool. Well, it's, I mean, the strength is there, but she's that's one of the hardest things in sports, dude, is to hit a fucking hundred oh, mile yeah, per hour yeah, baseball, yeah. dude. They're, they're, they're giving uh, performance enhancing drugs too much credit, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But as far as transgender in sports, no, I think we're crossing all these lines. We're, we're, society's going to be so... What about d- boxing? Diluted in so many ways. What about boxing or like MMA? You have a transgender MMA athlete. I don't. What if somebody gets hurt? What if a fucking female who's really a guy is competing, uh, competing against other females and fucking really hurts somebody? Is yeah. that when you're going to stop it? Yeah. No, I, I don't know. We're, that's that's what's going to take is catastrophe. They're going to wait for a catastrophe to happen and then. But team sports is different too, man. Because I mean, they got team. You know, it's a whole team. But yeah, but still, what happens in, in an athlete in, in some sort of physical sport where they're really a man and they're competing against women's and somebody gets hurt? Then that's going to be the thing. Well, fuck. You know, if it wasn't a real guy, would no, nobody would have got hurt. I don't know. Yeah, because yeah, they do it in youth sports already. They got weight limits. They got size limits. Like, if you got a really big guy, they're like, okay, he can play, but he can't touch the ball. That yeah, when we're, you're young, you still allow little girls and boys play the same sports together, soccer yeah. or baseball. And you notice that what, once it gets to, like, maybe the 12-age, 13-year-old level, they start switching over to girls-to-boys sports, yeah. you know, because then they, they, they women can't compete at that level um, with male. They just can't. I don't know, man. I'm trying to think. There's a lot of sports where women can compete with men, like bowling, golf. Uh, I don't know. I don't know because guys swimming. can hit the ball further. The 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 tennis thing where you know they had you know uh, I don't you had like uh, who was it Billy Jean or and oh yeah, but he wasn't a pro athlete. No, I, I know, mean. and he still he beat her right. I can't remember. I oh, he did. He was a tennis. I mean, yeah, but uh, he was way older or something like that. Like yeah. it just shows you that they can't compete at the same level. For the most part, they, you can't. And it's it's not being sexist. It's just being honest and real. That well, that's why I'm wondering how would Serena do against like uh, just a, an average male player? I don't think she whip his whip his ass. But against like a, maybe a semi pro or somebody who's really you know pretty good, she probably ended up losing. Yeah. I don't think your fucking club pro will beat her, but I think fucking, you know, a, a really good. But I don't know. I just I just think there's things that should be for men and things that should be for women. And there's things that should be for both of them. And I don't know. We're blurring too many lines and uh, we're getting so diluted in, in every aspect of life. It's like it's OK to have separation of shit, dude. It's OK to have guys who have guy shit and girls who have girl shit. It's nothing wrong with it. I think that's just the media pushing that, though, man, because, like, everyday people, like, yeah, we have a, a transgender person at work. I won't say male or female, what is going on, but it's no different to me. Just like a straight-up normal co-worker. I mean, we hang, kick it, whatever. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, there's it's nothing no wrong. I just think there's different things that you should be involved in, like, you know, sports. I think that's a big thing. Um it's gonna, it's gonna come to a pinnacle or something's gonna happen like that. Cause what about these other women? Like that's their life. They lift weights. I was thinking about this, right? These women lift weights. That's their life. Their country's paying for their, their way. You know what I'm saying? And that, that, what's gonna happen when the Olympics roll around? Are the Russians gonna start having transgender men just to fucking win gold? Yeah. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. They and they have a fucking. They're always getting caught for. Drug and enhancing. Well, fucking. yeah, look at they just had caught a fucking beluga whale had shit trapped around. Did you see that? <laughs> yeah, I see like that. the whale's fucking a spy. <laughs> the whale looks so cute too. Russia's always trying to get advantage somehow, huh? I love it, dude. I think I'm Russian at heart, dude. Are you? Yeah, I'm trans trans Russian <laughs> now. Uh, hey, whatever. I say whatever. You are Russian. You got Russian blood. In I you, do. Dude, yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah, I do. Fucking yeah. I knew it, dude. You were, rooting, <laughs> you were rooting for fucking Ivan Drago. I was. To knock Rocky Fuck out. Fuck Rocky. No, I like You Rocky. were happy when Drago killed Creed, huh? No, I wasn't. You were like, Mother Russia. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
It's all good, dude. We can cross out that signal, dude. What do we got, dude? Oh, that's the fetish stuff down there. We could, we'll could, wait on that. How about... um? Oh, can I tell that story I was telling you about? But Daryl at work, just black dude. What what's it? Oh, is it race or what? What do you think? It, it was just about affecting people. Oh, that goes with reality. Yeah, like yeah, reality. So he was telling me, you know, it's a, it's a black guy, I know Daryl, and uh, he he lives he was in, he lives in Stockton, and in high school, his uh, mother told him to send him to Wyoming because he was getting in trouble. So he goes to Wyoming, and he becomes the only black kid in school, right? Yeah. And he goes out there because his aunt's out there. And uh, he's staying out there. He meets a friend, a friend, a, a guy at school, and they become good friends. And he invites him over to the house. Well, the, the kid's dad, I mean, granted, this is Wyoming, says, you know, we're, we're not friends with black people. He just tells them that's what it is. White people stay with white people. And, he's and like, this was back in the 80s or something. Yeah, right? yeah. And he goes, and, he, and, he, and so he goes, uh, he goes, what? He goes, yeah. And so the kid runs away, runs to my friend Daryl's house where he's staying. And they say, well, you can stay the night, but you got to go back. And and Daryl's like a, like just a generally like good dude, just always trying to figure out what the problem is. So he's like, let me go talk to your dad. And his friend was like, no, 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 no. He's like, let me go talk to him. So the guy owns a business, so he goes to his place of business, and he sees this uh, outside the business, this El Dorado Cadillac. And Daryl was telling me the story. He's like, you know how black people are in Cadillacs, man. We love – he had the chocolate chip cover, and he's explaining it, the white walls, and he was like, this is – it was badass. It was the old El Dorado, the big one, the man, special he's order a mustard, one. Yep. And he's like – so I go inside there, and he goes, sir? And he goes, yeah. And he goes, uh, before we you know have this conversation, he goes, I just want to know, is that your vehicle? He's like, yeah. He goes, oh, man. Is there any way I could just ride in it one day? Just take me for a ride? And he goes, you like that, huh? And he said he's seen his eyes open up. He's like, you like that? He said they found a common thread. And it took a while. And he goes, eventually, he came around. And he started, you know, I became friends with the family and the brother. And, and I don't want to go on all about the stuff he had to deal with out there. People calling him the N-word, whatever. And you don't belong here and stuff. But just the fact that he interacted with his family who never, and it goes back to the media, dude. It's 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 not knowing and hearing things here in Chicago and hearing this thing and it's like oh my gosh you know can they control themselves and then he befriends this person and now he's friends with his family and he turned their whole train of thought and that's what happens in life when you're able to to interact with people that you don't and you think you know everything about everything because maybe you meet one person or two people you think you know you think you know the group of people or you watch the news and you see the media about shit and you're like no no i know them. trust me i know them. i i work in the criminal just well if you work in the criminal justice system you work around criminals yeah so that still doesn't give you a good you gauge know the you know the criminal element that's what you know yeah, that don't give you a good gauge of what they're about like it, it just gives you a specified perspective so you know i, I don't know it's media versus reality well you know that, that, that's where everything starts though man you just have a conversation conversation and then you find commonality commonality you know one of my good stories uh it's very similar. This guy comes into work. He's a new guy at work. He came from Santa Cruz. And I remember going home that day and telling my old lady, hey, this guy's an asshole. We got a new asshole at work. I don't really like this guy and shit. But then we had to work side by side on an outage together and got to know him. He's a good dude. Then he became my friend. Then he became my best friend. Then we lived together for a while. And <laughs> if I had just gone with my first intentions of what I think about this person or I know he's a surfer guy from Santa Cruz, I know how those guys are. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I would have never... Uh, cultivated this relationship that's been a big part of my life for the last 15 years almost 20 years now so mm. yeah just by interacting with that's them. it just uh, having a conversation man yeah and that goes with like gays and and people of other races that you're not accustomed to knowing or dealing with that goes for anybody once you start meeting somebody you're like oh shit they're actually pretty cool people like that's not all the same like that's and it goes for for probably for black people to white people and say Oh shit, he's a pretty cool guy. You no, know, not all white people are trying to fuck us, and not all white people are yeah. are the man. And, and and you start meeting people, and you're like, oh, okay, they're actually good people. Like, you just have to go out of your box, out of your realm, and experience it. You know, you can't. You get a sample size of two or three, and all of a sudden, that gives you your whole opinion about a whole group of people. And I think, uh, like, and that happens a lot with a lot of uh, uh, Mexicans coming over from Mexico. People have this persona because they'll have two or three or five of them. and 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 somebody like me who deals with thousands of them 
you're like, oh shit, the majority of them are just trying to have a better life and stay out of the out of the limelight. They're like, but they're still rapists and murderers, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> you get that perspective, and that's what you think. You think, oh no, no, look at look at that one guy who, yeah, but. I've seen thousands of them are like just and, and and they try to stay low key and they're just trying not to be you know in the radar and they're trying to earn a living and want their kids to go to college they want the same fucking things we want like we have this perspective of people without really knowing them and then when people say no I know some your sample size is so small yeah. that you can't really say you know well, them I've already I've heard this uh, recently was there's always one in the, in the group. There's always one in the group. And it's of what? Like there's one racist in the group or that there's one gay in the group. Hey, white people from California might not think from like the same as white people from North Carolina. No, definitely. Black people from Texas might not think the same as black people from Washington. Like No, no, no. You, you, it's it this is where it's it's very similar is when you're in big urban areas, right? Like San Francisco, like Oakland, like uh, LA. They have similar train of thought when they live in those areas right mm -hmm. chicago new york they have because you're well, what opens up your mind is the internet is because now you can see and listen to people talk about their stories or experiences and you're like i would never ever able to hear that if i didn't see this online or something like that because the internet has a lot of good things a lot of bad things but at least then we can kind of get a perspective of how other people live and what they're going through and their experiences i just went to my daughter's graduation yesterday and 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 you hear some of the stories of of maybe a girl that had a kid and still graduated college or this the uh her well, my daughter's friend she's from cameroon africa and her story and you listen to uh this other guy he's from hungary his story or you listen to this one black dude who who's a valedictorian who didn't even have internet access, so they had to s go borrow from a friend or go to the library till like two in the morning and walk just to get internet access to do homework and stuff. You, you listen to their. You know what though? We graduated a fucking high school and never had internet access. Yeah, bro. well, now you got to do all your homework and shit on it. Like you can't. My my son has to have it, or he can't turn in his fucking homework, dude. It's all Alleg online. Allegedly. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. Poor kid. <laughs> but like. They like, have it so hard today. <laughs> no, 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 no. He he was just saying that they living without of what everybody else is living and, and, and to hear their stories of succession and to succeed. And you're like, hey, there's so many different walks of life and everybody's so different. Like, but we we label people. We we label this group. We li and it happens to everybody. And when I say that, everybody will say, well, you're just giving people passes. No, we label white people. We label black people. We label Mexicans. Yeah. We label everybody. And we're not monolithic. We're we're all different, completely different. Like me and Fraser grew up in in the Galt. Yeah. Like we had the same friendship, everything. And we might think we think completely different than each other. You know what? He's racist. I'm not. That just that's just the way the world. It's <laughs> <laughs> fine. You know it. I'm just fucking with you. But you know we we're not the same people. Even even growing up and living in the same area, we're still not the same fucking people. You know, people are monolithic. We got to give people more credit than we than we do. I think. Well, you know, for myself, man, I you know, having gone to so many schools, I went to schools in six different states, man, and I got to see the curriculum change, the difference in in learning as a young man like that. But big part of my personality is having been the new kid so many times. Or when you're out of state, they're always like, "Oh, you're from California," like that's that's something special because you're from California, man. They don't like you. Yeah. I remember coming back from Texas. You remember when I came back to Fairside? It was like uh, into sixth grade. Mm -hmm. And I, I had purple cords on. I was wearing purple corduroy jeans. Yeah, but because, you, were, you were always different, though. Yeah, but that was the cool shit from where I came from, man. And then I could come to Galt. Nobody's wearing cords. And definitely nobody wearing purple cords, dude, you know? Yeah, well, I just... And, and this kind of... It's kind of the same subject, but kind of gets off the subject. It's more about guns. But it's it's I listened to the story of Bum you you heard of Bum B. Bum B's a rapper in Texas, he's probably the most popular rapper in Texas, old old school. Um he uh so he's he's he goes, My whole life I've been prepared for someone trying to get me get at me. Yeah. Right? Because he grew him and his wife grew up in a in you know, in a poor area and they had to survive and so he's all once he made some money, he got you know, bought a nice house and nice table because I, I my wife has never answered the door. Ever. Yeah. She never answers the door. I always answer the door, and I always got a gun, right? I'm always low. I'm waiting for someone to get jacked. That's his mentality. Yeah. He's living in a neighborhood where he lives next to doctors and lawyers and stuff, and he, the only black people in that area. But 
he goes, uh, so this is in Texas. And this is, tells you how different it is in different areas. Um, they got home from dinner. He goes upstairs. He's like a three-story house. He's going to take a shit. His wife is putting dishes in the dishwasher. And she sees somebody pass through the window. It's in the evening. She goes, oh, it might be the neighbor. And then she hears the doorbell ring. Well, they get a lot of packages. So they always get the one doorbell. And then that's it. So she goes over. And she's they're older. They're probably in their 50s. She looks out the window. Don't see nobody. So she opens the door. Guy comes through with the mask. Ski mask comes in with the gun to her head. Puts her on the ground. Says, you know, who's in the house? What's going on? You know, I want your money and shit. She's like, take my car. Take everything. She knows her husband's upstairs on the shitter. Yeah. So she's like, fuck, I can't let him go upstairs because she catches him. On, he catches him on the shitter. She's, he's going to kill him. And her mentality was like, I'd rather him kill me. I'd rather him shoot at me than at least he could have time to go get the gun. And so she's stalling him, telling him no. And then he, she sees him look towards the bedroom at her. She's like, oh, fuck, he wants to rape me. And she he goes, let's, and then he hears footsteps because her husband, Bum B, hears all this going on. So he fucking, boom, just a T-shirt, butt naked, goes and grabs his gun. And he goes, tell him not come down here. She had, she goes, and she still started crying because it's traumatic for people. Oh, fuck and yeah, says dude. she could feel the cold against her head. And she said, uh, um, she goes, I can still feel it. And she goes, he goes, he goes, hey, tell him if he comes down here, I'm shooting you right here in the head and killing you. And she's like, bun, don't come down here, bun, don't come down here. And he heard, she goes, I was looking at his eyes. And she goes, I could see the, the mask. It was up a little bit. He was white. And I could see his eyes open up when I said bun. Because in Texas, he's like a well-known rapper. Yeah. And she's like, he's like, oh, fuck, it's Bun B's house. Like, And then it became random. It wasn't deliberate. It was random. And he goes, where's the car? I want the car. Give me the keys. He goes, the keys are in the garage or in the car. Take it. Get out of here. And she, he runs towards the garage, gets in there. He's like, open the door, open the door. She's panicking, so the garage door is going up and down. And he can't figure out because it's a brand new Audi or something. So the starter is like on the passenger. He can't figure out how to open it. Bun runs down with his, his gun, and she's all shuts the garage door. She's like, no, don't let him go. She, she's all, fuck that. It's my house. Goes in there, fucking lets off some fucking rounds into the car. They show the picture later. The headset, the headrest in the car had yeah. like five bullet holes in it. Like he was on target, but the guy ducked. He ended up shooting. There was a shootout inside the garage. Guy got shot, fell out. He went out there, pistol whipped the dude. Guy got up, took off running. Um, and the police came. He said the police were awesome. Police came out there. They said he'll turn up somewhere. He got shot. He ended up turning up. Um, but they said if that happened, that happened in Texas. If that happened in New York, Bun would be going to jail right now okay. because. He wasn't in threat of his life. Yeah. That's the rules. He yeah. has to retreat to the furthest point of the house. Yes, you have to have the retreat rule, yeah. Yeah. But in Texas, is a different r- rules, right? It's an open, yeah. open carry state. So in Texas, he's, he's, a, he's a citizen that did himself right. And this, shows, this goes to show you the, the different lifestyle and different attitude people have across this country. Like, we're not all the same. You know, it was just a good story that I thought it was just no, a good story. No, re- regardless of race, man, that's what it is. Rules rules make the way it is. And California has some of the fucking weirdest rules there are, dude. Well, he said, and he said, like, you're not, you know, I would never want this to happen to me. But if I'm glad it happened to us because all my neighbors, I know for a fact they don't have no guns. And yeah. they're not built like we're built. We, we're, we're used to this kind of thing. Yeah. Like, we dealt with it. We're dealing with it. But he's like, if it happened to any of them, they would be dead. He's like, but we were able to fight, fight back. But it's just like... Um, it's different everywhere. It's not the same everywhere. We're we, different everywhere. You know, well, that's what happened to me, man. I, I had a couple guns when I was younger, you know, and then I got rid of them when I got married because she didn't want guns. But after we had this shootout next door, dude, it changed my mind on shit again. I was like, fuck it. And then once I bought one gun, I was like, fuck it, I need another one. And then I need another one, and now I'm at where I'm at, dude. But No, that didn't go too far. Real life shit, that's what I'm getting back to that movie in reality, dude. You she see shit in the movies, but it ain't real, man. It's it's not real. Oh, we're brainwashed. No, dude. I mean, uh, we're brainwashed to believe this shit's real, though. How many people, like you were saying, Michelle, was like, like that's that's real. Yeah. Because we're so brainwashed to believe, in in our life, what what's real for us? It's real to 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 go through these steps of life. But you can go through any steps you want. It don't. It's not real. It's real on. It's real to us because we watch it. We're so brainwashed on TV. Well, like. What I like about movies is you usually get the story or the plot or that kind of stuff. Those those have real life connotations, right? Mm-hmm. But the little shit that happens in between, it doesn't, man. Well, that goes for 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 criminals and like gangsters and shit. Like you have this this 
this image because you watch all these gangster movies. Yeah. I want to be a gangster. I want to be, but gangster is either death or jail, yeah. death or prison. You talk to real fucking gangsters, they're like, I wish I would have never got involved in this life. Yeah. But in rea- in our reality, because watching all these things, we believe it's this having cash and fucking having women and cars and. It's jail and death. That's all these people turning against you. So, yeah, reality is we're brainwashed to think certain things are better than they really are. Well, that's, you know, the truth of it is, too, man, like the racism in California is way different than the racism in Texas or or Missouri or something like that, right? But you get fed this in movies, on media, in the news, right? Most of the time, it's black on black violence. That's what's going down, like in Chicago and stuff like that. All the well, shootings, that's that's you know. that's a that's a that's a term used. That's a mis- That's that's true, but it goes the same for Chinese on Chinese. It's like ninety yeah ninety seven percent of black will kill black because they live in the same neighborhood. Chinese live in the same neighborhood. That's right. White people is like ninety six percent white on white crime. It's, yeah. it's 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 a false term as far as it's a narrative trying to fix that. Uh, black people are inherently more violent than any other group. It's the same percentages that fall out through all races. No, because in Russian, it's Russian on Russian crime. Like you said, it's the neighborhood you live in, right? I go in these areas of Sacramento that it's all Hmong. It's all Lake Ocean. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all Japanese or it could be all Chinese. They basically all live together in a big, big Asian area. But you have your different blocks and different sets or where people are living in. It's... The Hmong people are scared of the Hmong people because they know how dirty they are and what they're going to do to them and they won't go to the cops because they're here illegally or whatever, you know. That's a big fear about being illegal is going to the cops Mm -hmm. because if you think you report this crime, that's that's funny you say that because the story I just told you about the thing that they had seen that guy previous, construction workers had seen him, but the construction workers were illegal, so they were afraid to report it, and they didn't want to say anything. They could have reported it, and they probably would have stopped this. Yeah. But And this happens, and, and what he was saying is true. This happened in Texas, but California is the same thing. Construction workers are, during the day, we're out in these neighborhoods. Where, so we see shit going on all the time. I've seen plenty of shit going on. And that most of these guys will see shit, and they won't say nothing because they're afraid the police are going to de- deport them. So they won't report crimes just just out of that yeah. fear. You know, uh, this kind of off topic, but that fucking tax plan where you pay income, you don't pay any income tax, right? You just pay a sales tax? The one I you're th- talking about? Yeah, I think if we just had a federal sales tax, right? That's also going to help with immigration because from day one, the illegals, right? They're paying taxes. Mm-hmm. Right off the bat. That's why I try to explain to everybody. Yeah, because they're going to buy shit this, this is a, just this, like anyone else. And this is why I tell these people this stupid fucking argument. And, and, and people will still, no, look at this, look at this. I've seen this on fucking this uh, www. whatever. I'm like, okay, whatever, dude. And, and you talk to them. It's like, well, the Mexicans are sending all their money back to Mexico. No, they're fucking not. You know how much, okay, say they make $800 a week. Yeah. They still have to buy gas. They still have to pay some sort of rent. They yeah. got to pay food. Most of their money is gone. They might send twenty, thirty dollars or whatever to, to some family in Mexico. It's not the money you guys are fucking thinking. And, and we're we're talking, telling them that's what's going on. That's what's wrong. Meanwhile, the corporations are sending all their money to offshore accounts, trillions of dollars to offshore accounts, so they don't have to pay taxes. But the Mexicans who are sending twenty, thirty dollars is the problem. Yeah, but like I, if your I, tax plan that you have is brilliant because. Everybody's paying taxes. Everybody, dude, the same. Everybody's paying the, the same. Same. Look, look at we were going at it because uh, we were talking about Weller saying he didn't get as much money back this year as he did oh, last most, year. Oh, everybody I know got fucked on okay, their taxes. So what I was trying to to make a point to Weller was like, how much did you pay in taxes this year? And he didn't know. And most people don't. They don't know how much they paid in tax, but they can tell you how much they didn't get back. Or how much we didn't get back each week. So what I was saying is just take a look at what how much you paid in taxes for 2017. If you paid in, I don't know, 10 grand, if you paid in 30 grand, right? For 2017, just look at what you paid in and what you gave the government. And then look at 2018 and see what you paid in and gave the government. Because that's really what you paid in taxes. Your refund is only a reflection of how much you overpaid in taxes. Right, and that makes sense if you got more money back every week, which everybody I talked to maybe got $20. It it was like, what, $1,200, $1,100 at the end of the year. So it didn't benefit them. That's why I I keep arguing that the tax plan only helped the rich. 
Yeah, but it didn't help the but, middle class. You see, you're overlooking what I'm saying. If you just look at what you paid in, right? Okay, but okay. Maybe you didn't overpay. That's why you didn't get but back. What does it say when you, you do your taxes every year? You get money back. Okay. Yeah. And so now this year, instead of, uh, of bringing home, say, whatever, say an th- even number, $1,000. Now you bring home 1020 every week. Yeah. So you're getting $20 more a week. That's like a little over $1,000 for the year. But you got 3000 less on your taxes. You lost $2,000. It's it's dollar for dollar. See, again, you're going to, uh, for your refund. What I'm saying is just look at what you paid in. But, right? Okay, so the next, how come I can't do as good as I did last year before the tax plan? Dude, because taxes is the biggest game out there. It's just a game. The rich people are going to get taxed at 40%, but they're going to write off 42%. Right. It's well, a, it's that's what game. I'm saying. Give the middle class their tax breaks. Give give them. We why in addition to we'll get these corporations down to twelve percent or whatever. It it as you why the money don't trickle down, dude. I don't know how you don't see it. It's fixed. You follow the money. That's the rule, right? Follow the money, right? So these p- people that got money right. p- pay people to get their money back for them. Yes. Where guys like us, I ain't paying nobody to fucking do my taxes, let alone fu- well, t- you gonna, teach me how to do some you, crooked you, shit. You say you make 100000 and you're going to pay a guy twenty five, thirty thousand 30000 to do your taxes? That doesn't make sense. No. So you can pay a guy twenty five, thirty thousand 30000 if you're making five plus million. Yeah, that's yeah. What, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then that, that, that's what they work on is percentages. Like, if you made uh, six hundred thousand dollars, right? You go to an H H and R block, something like that. They're going to charge you by percentage of what well, you made. Yeah, so you, you you're making six hundred. You're not going to H and R block. No. Well, at six hundred. You're at thirty seven percent tax bracket, so <laughs> you're not fucking worried about it. You got somebody taking care of your shit. Yeah, and I don't think six. I don't even think a million dollars is that much anymore. I'm talking. I'm talking about the elite fifty plus million dollar. People. And you know what? And I don't hate on them. Make it. Make your money. And I don't yeah. think they should pay thirty seven percent. They should. There should be no game. It's just like sales tax. This is what got me on the California sales tax, right? They never ask you when you buy shit at the store, what you, how much you're going to make? What's your tax bracket? Mm-hmm. What are you, they don't ask you that. They just tax you. No, I'm you. not in disagreement with that sales yeah, tax. They just fucking tax you. So why not do it federally? How about when you go and do your taxes, you're online, you can fucking put, okay, I want my tax money to go here. I want my tax money to go here. Yeah. You have to still pay that taxes, but I want it to go here instead. How about that? Well, you know, I was talking to Harold. And he lives in Nevada, right? Mm-hmm. But he gets a check from California. Mm-hmm. So he's gonna still got to pay fucking California tax because he fucking made the money in California even though he lives in Nevada. Mm-hmm. That's fucking bullshit too, dude. Mm-hmm. Tax him where you're spending your money, right? You see it at the movie theater. I, I, I don't know about that though because like, there's a lot of like construction companies that come from Texas and shit out here. Yeah. And they pay their guys shit. They pay their guys like 15, 16 bucks an hour. They come from Texas... So they bring their own guys. Eventually, their guys leak out. They start asking, what are you guys making? Another 25, 30, and they start leaving. That's what always happens. But you work over here, you should be taxed over here. Those companies shouldn't get, like, just because my boss is from California, he should be taxed at 50, 60%, and the corporations that come from Texas over should be taxed at Texas rate? No, that's not fair. To do business in California, that's not fair. Because you're making the money in California, just like professional players, right? Whatever state they're playing in, that's what their tax rate is for that game. See, that's what, then that's fair, the way it's set up now. But I like I like your idea. I like just paying a flat out. You're playing milk. You're playing paying cereal. I like that. I don't yeah. mind that idea. Cars, houses, trucks, everything. And I, and I think they ought to tax the stock market the same way because you're buying and selling. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's so many more breaks for people like that. It's fucking ridiculous. But if say if you start doing that. Everything's going to go up, but you're going to eliminate your taxes. So then you start budgeting better. You're like, oh, shit, you know what? I could actually make more if I spend this much less on food or, yeah. you know, you know, maybe people have a better diet. I don't know. Well, I bet a dude, right, uh, I go to people's houses. They ask you, hey, you want a soda? You want a water? You know, something like that, right? And I was like, yeah, I'll take this water. And I'm in his kitchen, so he opens up his kitchen, right? Mm-hmm. He's basically just got condiments. He doesn't really have anything in his refrigerator. I was like, man, did you just move in? He's all, no. I said, well, where's all your food at? <laughs> He's like, I go get my food every day. Fresh? He just buys food every day. He goes, goes out? He goes, no, he goes to the, he walks or rides his bicycle to the fucking grocery store. He buys his meal, makes it. Is he single? Yeah, single. Yeah, single yeah, retired. We, we, can't, we couldn't do that because, 
Well, I mean, we got to get up at, Sarah gets up at three o'clock in the morning and makes my lunch. And then, you know, she makes dinner for the next day or starts, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. No, his family's different. But it's part of his process is that he just goes to the store every day. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I started thinking about it. Like, man, this guy fucking, he got it down pretty good because he knows what he's going to spend every day on food or whatever, you know? Everybody lives different. Not yeah. everybody's the same. Well, wrap that bitch up. Let's get something. Your pick, man. Oh, I thought I just did. Oh, okay. Well, I'll do uh, dating then. Modern dating. What do we know about modern dating, Fresh? We really don't know shit, but I can tell you the difference between when we used to date. Like, uh, you remember you'd have to, first of all, see somebody you liked, or you had a friend that told you, hey, th- either this girl's pretty hot or whatever. Yeah, you didn't, you met meet, her, you didn't yeah. meet him online. Or like, uh, <laughs> you take the bullet for your friend or something, you know? What do you mean by that? Like your friend's going to Bona Chick and she has a friend over at her house and you got to fucking handle it just for your friend. Oh, it was like cats or whatever? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that too, yeah. huh? Yeah. <laughs> but what I was saying, that like you see the person and then you got to talk, communicate, get a phone number, right? And then later on that night or I never waited three days or any of that kind of shit. I would just call them that night. You call them and their fucking dad answers the phone and you're like, oh. Fuck. Yeah, I'm calling. Can I talk to your daughter? What do you want to talk to my daughter for, man? You know, there's a lot of shit that go down with it like yeah. that now. Yeah. Before you even go on a date, or before so you, you like you it. said before we were talking before, you have a lot more. You're more invested into it. Yeah, you have a little bit more emotion invested yeah, into it because you're throwing yourself out there, and the rejection. If you get rejected, like they don't want to give you the phone number, they don't want to talk to you, and that kind of shit. Because now it's so fleeting. It's like you, you, you have can have a relationship just texting all the fucking time when you don't <laughs> verbally have a conversation. Look at fucking it's, catfish, dude. These people, some of them, two years they've been talking to each other on the fucking computer. Yeah, I don't know all about that shit. I'm still not up on all that shit. Like, like you're having a relationship with someone you never met? That doesn't even make sense to me. Like, the whole part of the relationship is having a physical connection with somebody in real time. Yeah. Going to the fucking state fair or going to a movie or going, you know, doing stuff. Like, physically interacting. And it's not about, it is about sex, but it's not about sex either. It's about fucking learning about that person going to eat with them bullshitting with them you know see what make, makes them laugh and what makes you laugh that old shit online and texting you like my little boy right he'll text me he is so clever when he texts me it's like funny fucking shit like this i'm like holy shit how'd you come up with that shit it's hilarious but then sometimes in face to face he doesn't have it he'll be like um i don't know what you mean and then he'll yeah. text you like, "Oh, this motherfucker's he's pretty funny." Oh, he's not in real life. Like the the new generation is like, like they can text and then delete text and delete, like figure out exactly what to say, word yeah. it perfectly. When you're f- talking like we're doing all the time, like it's hard to do. It's hard to can continue to have a conversation or say something witty or whatever. That's hard to do. That's when you learn about people, not through fucking text or online messaging, dude. Well, I think that's a it's part of personality now, man. Is you have like this fucking digital personality, and then you you meet the person and they're fucking completely different in person than they were on the fucking phone or on the computer. On the computer, like I would say, text. Because when me and Sarah first started dating, we were talking, we were talking on the phone for hours to like two in the morning. Yeah. We were literally talking for all, like talking and talking and talking and talking. But it wasn't text. It, every it, text had just came out, kind of like we just started doing it. So I'd be like, "Can I call you later on?" Yeah, like shit like that. It wasn't like whole messages. Like it wasn't a means of communicating. It was just like a, yeah, an update no. type shit. Yeah. So I think I think yeah, the youth are losing. It. It's like there's there's no emotional attachment and everything's fleeting because you don't have that a uh, physical um, interaction with people anymore. But what I did see a statistic though, man. Like the millennial generation now, like their divorce rate is a lot better than fucking our our divorce rate. Our divorce rate's like fifty fifty. Really? Theirs is like 70 30. Really? Yeah, I mean, it's quite a do you bit th- higher. Oh, do you think because, as you notice, they're waiting longer to get married? Yeah, their average age of married is 31 years old. Yeah, so then you're kind of who you are. You kind of already experienced yeah. like what life you've already went out and partied. You got that out of your system where you're like, I'm kind of burnt out on that. You know, you could do it periodically, but then now you're ready to settle down. Now you know who you are. So when you meet that person, you're really not changing who you are. You might change some moral convictions, but. You're the same kind of person you're going to be. Yeah. I, I always say you should wait. I think you should wait. I think it should be 30. I think you've got to be 30 years old to get married. 
Because, yeah, the I mean, the young kids might have some things, you know, they got figured out better than we did, dude. Because it was tradition. It was reality. Re- it was like what we're talking about reality. It was you you get out of high school, you know, some people went to college, or you met the girl, you got married, you had kids. That was that was what that you, was respect. That's yeah, what you joined thought. the military, you know. Yeah, you thought you were supposed to do that. But you can do anything. You can do stuff backwards. You can do it. What we have in our head, and I always hear people that we know or friends at work will say, you know, well, no, this is the way it's supposed to be. No, we don't have to be. You can do whatever you want. There's nobody says that you have to do it this way. You have to, you know, meet your girl, have a kid. You you don't have to. You don't have to. You can fucking go experience life and then go to college afterwards. Like, you can do whatever you want. There's no rules to this. Well, that that's part of it, man. We've opened it up for us. I mean, I think we're, uh, we're part of the generation that... Raised our kids uh, somewhat like our parents did. We're the last of the dinosaurs, bro. But, but the kids being raised right now, it's a helicopter generation of parents, dude. Where, like, I see it all the time in all areas of Sacramento, no matter where I go, even in Galt, dude. Every There's very few kids that walk home. I mean, it's probably under 10% of kids at school walk home. You think so? They got think, somebody that picks them up, dude. I think it's gen- generation. I mean, I think it's... Uh, dude, uh, how many people got picked up when we were kids? I remember walking home from school, and there was hundreds of kids walking home But it home might be school. just... It, it may, maybe the numbers prove it, but I don't know. Like in West Sac, like, there are just fucking kids all over the place walk. But it's more of a smaller community, too. Just like well, yeah, you're kids. Southport, dude. I mean... So all the kids walk home. I guess it just depends on where you're at, Maybe. I don't know. But, I mean, maybe there is numbers to prove it. I don't know. But well, I just I see it because every school you go by, there's a fucking long chain of cars. And if there's a stop sign or something like that involved, the traffic backs up for like an hour I've, during I've, pickup. I've done a few times go pick up my son, and it's chaos. Dude. Yeah. And people are honking, yelling at each other. It's like a fucking uh, Mad Max thing, dude. I'm like, this is stupid. I just, a- I just park way in the fuck away. And I tell DJ, when well, I'm pick you up today, just walk way the fuck over here, and I don't yeah. want to be involved in all this fucking bullshit. That's exactly what I do. I tell yeah. the girls, I'm not picking you up on fucking Park Terrace. Mm-hmm. Walk down the neighborhood in the court. I'll be parked over here in the court. Boom. Mm-hmm. Then get in and out. Yeah. It's a fucking yeah. game plan. But it is what it is, man. I don't know what the fucking topic we were on right there, dude. <laughs> he lost. <laughs> yeah, what was it? Oh, it was a dating? <laughs> it was dating. It was like... Just the new millennials to us, and maybe they do have it figured out. Maybe they're enjoying life more than we did. You know, there is. No, I think the, the new generation is realizing there is no rules to this bullshit. Like we we think there's rules, and we say no, this is the way it should be. <laughs> so but there is no fucking rule. So I remember this dude. Okay, uh, Bert. Burke started getting on sites like Plenty of Fish, or uh, you know, these dating sites and Grindr. stuff. Grinder. Well, I don't. I don't know, but I rem- I remember. Uh, <laughs> We're taking pictures because he had no pictures for his profile and shit, right? So we got pictures of him like in his suit, pictures of him in his shorts. This is all during the same day, right? It's the same day, but we have him do different activities like out by the pool, fucking playing pool in the garage, drinking beer, you know, all these shit we put together in one day. (laughs) And I'm like, how real is this? You know what I mean? It's not really real. We're just building this profile up. Mm Mm-hmm. And then, and then now too, you edit in the pictures. So it, I've seen people. I'm like, oh fuck, that looked good. And then you see them in real life. You're like, no, nah, that's not the same fucking person, dude. That's was like my boy Dan when he went to go. Uh, he's d- doing the internet dating shit and he uh, called this girl. They're having a good time online, talking on the phone, all that kind of shit. He's he's in her neighborhood, so he's like, hey, I'm in your neighborhood. Uh, I was gonna get some lunch. You want me to pick something up? She's like, yeah, yeah. She's like, what are you getting? He's like, I'm going to get some Burger King. All right, I'm going to get a Whopper. He said, oh, okay, I'll get a Whopper too. She said, extra large fries, extra large Coke, this and that. He's like, all right. Pulls up to the house. Girl's big. She's a big girl, dude. <laughs> she totally catfished. She got a free meal. She totally catfished him, dude, because they were like in their 30s, but she's using a picture when she was like 21 oh, yeah. on the swim team at Stanford and shit, dude, looking <laughs> bad. But now she's a big girl, dude. And people, people like, like this is why I like to do this, like me and you are doing, because this is honest. This is us on a video. 
This is who we are. Yeah. This is a blue belly. Well, I'm playing character. Right. But this is us. This is this is being honest and genuine and we're talking and we're bullshit and we're opening ourselves up. I think so many people are afraid to like this is when we try to have people and friends of ours try to hey come on the thing. No, 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 I ain't gonna do that. Because they're worried about their image or worried about how people are gonna perceive them, right? Yeah. Oh, it's silly. I mean I'm gonna look stupid and it's like, no, I can't do that. Who cares? Like, who fucking cares? Like, why are you trying to uh, present this persona of perfection and and of of who you think you are compared to what people think you are? Like, people don't give a fuck. Like, people don't. If you care so much about it, you got uh, you got other problems. Like, if I cared about like other people's image of themselves, or I like people who are honest who say show a picture of their their fat. Or, or, you know, or they're bald or they're fucking whatever. Uh-huh. Or they, they, like, we have our opinions. But at least we uh, voice our opinions. At least we're being genuine and honest. I think so many people have this uh, this thing. They're trying to pr- pr- portray this image of themselves or their lives. Like, there's perfect life. And it's not all that way, no, man. No, you know who I'm talking about, dude. There's, there's certain people that talk a certain way with us, right? Then you hear them get on the phone or they answer they, and their voice changes. They have a d- different persona when they're talking on the phone as compared to when they're talking to mm. just to us face to face. And I see you what know, my wife does it too. Like she has her business voice, you know, like when she's at work or whatever and the way she talks. But for me, I feel like I'm the same phrase no matter what, dude. Man, it might be easier for us. It's definitely easier for me because at work, I work construction. So however I fucking talk now is like how I talk at work. I talk yeah. the same fucking way. It doesn't matter. And I understand that your wife can't be here bullshitting with us and go to work and talk the same way. Yeah, it's not going to function in, in, in a, you know, civilized society. But, but I mean... But you know, like, dudes, when they're talking like that to us and then they get on the phone and talk to a girl, like, hey, girl, what's up? What oh, you doing? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but I'm even talking about, like, like uh, my daughter will... Oh, let me let me see a picture of your hair. You got your hair done with. Okay, don't post it. Like they want this perfect image of themselves. So I'm not allowed to post pictures of them without their consent because they get pissed at me, right? <laughs> so, but I mean, it's 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 like it's who cares? But whatever, you know, I'll, I'll well, go with the flow. It's not me, so I I shouldn't be able to do whatever I want with someone else's image. You know, I, what, I, you know what it is, is because we don't have a social media life. Some people have a social media life, right? Like you're saying, you always get the best outtakes of their life. Yeah, they're yeah. going highlight, to Disneyland. They're highlight reel. They bought a new car. They just fucking put a pool in. They're fucking got you know. They're posting all the and there's nothing houses. wrong with that. Like, like saying like, look at check it out. Look what I did for myself or whatever. That's awesome. I brag about my kids all the time, and I know really nobody really gives a fuck. I'm like, we're me and Sarah are probably the only ones that really fucking care. Like. Like, people, you will talk to people about their kids. You're like, oh, that's cool. That's awesome. What about... And then you start talking about yours. That's life. Whatever. But I just... I just, like... Who cares? Just express yourself who you are. Like, I don't know. I, that's why I like doing this. Because we just tell who we are. We're open. We're fucking vulnerable. We yeah. open ourselves up. Well, like, there's, there's no takes, redo. There's no retake either. If you say something fucked up, it's... You say something fucked up forever. And I'm not trying to pat us on the back, but at least we're... I mean, when you go to work, I have talked to people or, or friends outside or family members, and they're, like, real adamant about their position or their thing. I'll say, well... Well, they won't talk about it in mixed company, or they would. They would never do this because they're like, no, 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 I'm not gonna do that. Well, who cares? Like, just be vulnerable. That's why I, I, I pat ourselves on the back because we just expose who we are. If they fuck it, like if you like us, you do. If you don't, then fuck it. Well, I know from talking to different people who listen to the show, they listen for different reasons, man. I think you it know? takes courage. I mean, it's easy for people to fucking bitch and complain and tell us online or say, like, oh, you're a fucking idiot or I'm going to choke the shit out of you. Whatever. It's easy for people. But it's, it's – then come in and say your opinion. Yeah. Or, or do your own thing and say your opinion. Nah, I don't want to look like this idiot. I don't want to look like foolish. See, then okay, then shut the fuck up. At least yeah. we're trying. Got, at least, at least no, we're putting ourselves out there. Yeah, you got no skin in the game. It's easy to fucking, you know, talk shit. Because I've had people mad at me and family members. I've had people say, you know, they not talked to me for a while or don't really care for me because I say some shit. Like, but you know what? Why am I going to pretend? I'm just going to be who I am. If you like me, you do. I don't agree with a lot of what Fraser says, but I love this guy. Like, I, yeah. I it, at least I can be honest about it. I don't know. And we'll put it out there, man. We gotta crush it. We got something little to do. What do we got, man? You want to roll through the uh, sexual fetish shit, man? Go ahead. That's your 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 
lane. This is you. This is Kevin well, Frazier. So we could put it on the headliner because apparently whenever we include sex on our headliner, we get more hit, hits. Bam, so. We get a lot of hits. So we looked up the top 10 sexual fetishes online. So that's got to be worldwide, I guess. Probably. Depends on what site you looked on. Was that CNN or Fox? Um, well, that's another thing I was going to ask you. You always <laughs> talk shit about CNN or Fox or mm-hmm. MSNBC and those, right? So where are you getting your information from? Where do I get my information? Yeah, if you're not watching um, any of that stuff. I read a lot of stuff online, and I'll try to watch. When I watch news, I watch the Because everything online is true. No, 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 you're right. It's not. <laughs> um, and, and what I'll do is I listen to... I listen to a lot of people's stories, like people who lived it, who's doing it, and say, this is how it affected me or whatever. Um, if I do watch news, it might be, oh, fuck. I try to watch the BBC. Um, yeah. I try to write foreign news. I, they always say watch foreign news because it's going to give you a better perspective on how the outside looks at the inside. Well, it's, uh, not, it's not as filtered as American news. Like, Remember that movie, Good Morning Vietnam? Yeah. There's a good example, dude, of the way news is done because the real shit's happening right here, but you can't report on the real shit. You have to report on this right here. No, right. That's why when I speak about Mexicans or immigration, I'm talking about from personal experience with the people that I deal with. When I talk about taxes, I'm talking about my personal taxes or people at work that I'm talking to. I'm not going on the numbers and say, well, look, at 72% of people. I, I, if you ever look back, I don't really go to numbers. I just go to my experiences and my interaction with people. That's where I get my news for the most part think- and or listen to people talk about their experiences that's my news well i, I watch ma- mainly fox and cnn because i want to see what the left is doing and what the right's doing and what what the because the store the truth of the story is right there in between the both of them because you know that's why i like brilliant idiots because they'll, they'll say the story and they'll break it down in their opinion form and they both have opposite opinions where i can kind of look at them and be like oh i can see that part or i can see that too you know so, that's why i like listening to brilliant idiots but, but isn't it sad that you just can't, can't have a uh a non-bias there's not any non-biased reporting like they just don't report just the truth like the only thing i seen this because well, you week- can't take take out human factor out of anything that's like capitalism is perfect in its form that's set up in america but the 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 x factor is human factor is greed it's like you, no, no, you can't the, the problem with capitalism in america is our taxing the taxing divides us but that's why we started our own country it, it really does, though. Yeah, and they left fucking Europe because they were getting taxed at 20%. And we had a war here because we were taxing for people who weren't representing us, which yeah. is happening now. We're getting paid tax for people who aren't representing the middle class. Yeah. That's, no, no, no. And, 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 and I heard talk are, to somebody about pitchforks are coming. Yeah, what are, what are our congressmen and our senators doing right now, right? They're trying to find dirt on Trump. That's what they're doing. They're, they're not doing their job. They're not making it easy for us to get medical or get take care of us with our pensions. You're or, right. You're they're, right. They're not doing that. Dude. That's why I listened to that 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 mayor from Minneapolis or Minnesota, St. Paul, Minnesota, and he, they said, "Why don't you run for president?" He goes, "Because I can make more change here in my city." I mean, he he did so much for a city. He picked up. He just the little things. He said once a month, once every Wednesday, every month, you could put your dishwasher your refrigerator your washing machine outside and we'll pick it up he goes because you know how much cheaper it is for us to go specifically and pick it up than clean up the alleys or shit on the side of the road he goes it's actually cheaper for us to do that yeah. he eliminated and it's all small shit he eliminated um the the fines for library books like you he goes you have this mentality of like oh, i'm gonna go get a book because i have to pay it's just he goes it's small numbers but our our the the people for to getting library cards have it doubled he goes, you just see this little shit. They, he increased the minimum wage in the city. He also, um, for new businesses building, he took away the uh, um, permit fees for those buildings to get built. Like he's, 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 he's changed his whole, his whole city into like a thriving interact. When they, when they figure out the budget for his city, he has all the people invited to the thing and they all discuss where the money should go for the city. All the people in the city, residents of the city, will say, okay, this is where I want my money to go to and they come to a consensus. All the people. Yeah. He, he, he's doing an awesome fucking job. Works and, and the way it's supposed to. Hey, check out that movie uh, Middleman like I was telling you because one of the very first problems he deals with is with a fucking Irish knee-breaking gangster and this guy that doesn't pay. Mm-hmm. We was like, hey, well, instead of breaking this guy's fucking knees, why don't we go talk to him and see what the problem is? Why hasn't he paid us? He's like, I'll give you two minutes. Go do whatever you can do. So he says, all right. So he goes in and talks to the guy, and he's, the guy's like, look, I could fucking pay this guy today. I just need a building permit fee. I need a, I need a, I need a building permit to get this shit done today. 
but without the building permit, I can't make money, so I can't pay him. Mm -hmm. So he goes back to the Irish gangster. He's like, hey, don't you know guys on city council? Yeah. Well, why don't you go get a fucking permit for this guy so he can make the money and pay you back, you know, without breaking any legs, and you get your money today because that's what it's all about is getting your money today, right? Mm Mm-hmm. It's like, fuck yeah, I guess I could do that. So he changed the whole th- thought process of doing shit the way it used to be. And now everybody's happy. The gangster's getting paid. The guy's getting his shit built. And the city got their fucking permit fee. The triangle's complete. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. No, yeah. In fact, I was like, if Sean Farmer's listening, go to Breakfast Club. Watch the, the, the mayor from St. Paul, Minneapolis. They implemented so many things for their city that changed their city so good. I mean, now they have... They had a, a big problem with the between the citizens and the police officers. They have constant interactions with them now where they came into a consensus of what's too much force and what's not between the police officers and the citizens. They came together, and he made them meet and sit, and then now they have a consensus on what, what's too much force, what's not. Now they're working together. He did that with the garbage collecting. He did that with the street crews. He did that with everybody. The city's running like – it's in, in it's incredible utop- utopian society. It, it's it's actually running pretty good. Where everybody, he's the leader, but he's also taking consideration of what everybody wants. With because you know the people on the like it's like your boss. Say your boss, he doesn't know what you go to the houses every day. He don't know what's really going on in the fucking field, right? Yeah. My owners say he don't really know what's going on in the field. We know what's going on in the field. So his attitude is: let me talk to the people who are really living it, who are trying to make it. Let's talk to them and let's get the answers from them. That's what I'm saying. Sean Farmer, you're listening. Watch that Breakfast Club. Well, he's, bu- he's busy trying to get the wall built and go. Same We've already thing. started it. We've I know, already started I know. portions it's, of the wall, dude. He said. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we're, we're, we're talking about fucking sexual fetishes. I know. Let's just run over real quick. So top 10 is adult babies. That's the number one or top 10 adult baby fetish. I've seen that. Uh, number nine is the group or swingers Ooh. fetish. See, I've not, never done none of this. I've seen the list. No, never this next one you have, it's water. And that could be in a spa, a pool, in the shower, a bathtub. I guess, yeah. But, Some you know, people, maybe a few times maybe, but it's not. It's Dude. not a fetish. A fetish is something that you want to do. Yeah, but some, some people have the water we've fetish. We've tried right? it. I've, tr- but it's. Okay, number six is uh, cross dressing. Yeah, I don't know about that. Like where she plays the man role, you play the woman role, that kind of stuff. I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> uh, number five is foot fetish. We've all heard of foot fetish. Yeah, I don't have a foot fetish. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, watching voyeur, voyeurism, voyeurism number four, yeah. Is that so? Is that just completely watching and that's it? I think that's it, dude. Because masturbation is probably. Mm-mm. I couldn't. I could. I guess okay. I could watch, but at some point, I got to get involved. But I think if you really counted it, you've probably masturbated more times than you've had sex. Yeah. Oh. You- so I really thought about it. Somebody, I don't have to think about it. And I yeah, know that's yeah. fucking fact. Yeah, that's life, dude. <laughs> more that, than a, I've probably done it more in a month. That's that middleman mo- mo- movie too <laughs> again. So uh, number three is rubber or latex. This latex or rubber fetish. Oh, like I've seen them put like, yeah, like a real gimp. sex HBO put whole latex on. Yeah, the gimp suit. And Can't all you that? fucking? Uh, I don't know, dude. I've never done it. Uh, number two, you probably done this. You ever done role playing? No. Dude, Honestly, I have fun getting some old Halloween costumes. Look at Furbies. There's guys who dress up like animals and all that shit. I've never done that. I've never. Done. Well, and number one, the number one of all, all of them is uh, domination spanking. Fucking little pain and sex, little S and M, dude. I don't know. I don't like pain. I've spanked that ass a few yeah, times. Yeah, I've okay, I've done that. I guess yeah. if you consider that, yeah, but it's not to where I'm like. Fucking give me the whip or let me punch you. I, like, I, no. If it's too hard, I'd be like, hey, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, I don't want no one grabbing on my mut- nuts and fucking squeezing them till they hurt. I'm like, that doesn't turn me on, dude. Maybe you just haven't uh, found that sexual pain threshold, dude. Or, and maybe know. I'll never will. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> There's always hope, dude. <laughs> I guess, dude. <laughs> dude, we knocked it out again, bud. All right. So, next Sunday, same Sunday, shit. Sunday, Sunday. 